not strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk close to Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to our Bible study once again today. Baba, wa adukwa lo wa inti emu wa wasi eko bibeli ile kansiloni. We pray, O Lord, that as we study today, your Spirit will impress and write and plant the word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Ang badu lo lo wa wipe bi asin koro iloni emi yo mo kala mo emi ni ma lati kosi no kan wa. We pray, O Lord, that you use the word to mature and strengthen us. And your help us to be victorious in our Christian lives in Jesus' name. Where we are weak, make us strong. If anyone has done something that displeased you, we are praying you forgive and you cleanse and you make such people to be stable and steadfast in the Lord in Jesus' name. 
and that rap me, Rufania, Bear, Care, Dari Jiwa, Care for Wama, Care Serawan, Law Latitus, White Light Machine, Tio Domain, and your Ruka Jesu. Plant her feet on the solid rock that will never fall. FSA Waluria Pata, Nantica Vinilis, Ubu, in Jesus' name, we pray. Ni Uruka Jesu, Yagadura. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Ebe Ruri Keta La La Tiesek, Nisi Keta. Let brotherly love continue. Keep your rakio watiti. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. E ma se gbagi la ti ma se alejo, ni tori pe ni pa be, ni awe lo miro se awangeli ni alejo la ima. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. And reminds us of the love of God in the heart of the believer. And it calls that brotherly love. That is love in the family of God. Love among the children of God, brothers and sisters. If we are born again, that love is already shared abroad by the Holy Ghost in our heart. Now he says obviously, if Christ is in you, that love is in you. It says, let it be manifested. Let brotherly love, which has started at the point of conversion, let it continue. And then he now gives us some practical details and examples of that love. Telling us not to be forgetful to entertain strangers. In those early days, there were believers that moved from one place to the other, and there were strangers to those believers they were meeting for the first time. At that time, it wasn't common to have hotels and for people to have some guest houses where they could stay. And so the believers who are being told, don't forget, there will be brothers and sisters, they may be strangers to you, they will need accommodation, they will need some hospitality, do not be forgetful, entertain them, help them, lodge them, and be of uh, assistance to them. And for the encouragement is said, others who have done that in the past, unknowingly, they have entertained and they have been hospitable to angels. At that time, there were some believers still suffering persecution. And some of them were in prison. And so the apostle was telling them, you'll remember, those who are in bonds feel like they feel. Weep with those who are weeping. As they rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Those in bonds, be as if you are bound with them. Apostle was telling them, and for those who suffer adversity, persecution, affliction, do not act as if you are not concerned. You will be yourselves in the body with them. And if you manifest that kind of love whatever you do to the least of the brethren you are doing unto the Lord in Matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 34 then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world why? For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was a thirst, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Can you dear? Nitori a big pami, and you see for million ye. They and ye clothed me, I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. 
Moses I son, and you see Bojo told me, Mo wa ni no tubu, and you see Tommy wa. And you will see how the Lord referred to these people that all their acts of kindness, all their deeds of goodness, and all their hearts, all their acts of hospitality, although they did it to people, they did it unto him. Wa ri gaga bi oluwa tin so ni pa awon eyan won yi pe, gbogbo iwa isore ati ore ti won ta awon eniyan, ati owo ore ti won na si won. In fact, they were surprised and they began to ask him, When did we see you to do that to you? In verse 40, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In as much as ye had done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. And you might wonder and you might say, I don't think I will ever meet an angel and be hospitable and lend a helping hand to an angel. The Lord is saying, you don't need to meet an angel. You can do something that will get into your record and it will be higher than doing it for an angel. Do it for the least of the brethren in the kingdom of God. You do it unto me, the master of angels. So go lu wa so wi pe o ko ni lo lati pade angel kankan iwo sa na wo ore tabi owo ikanu si kan to kere ju ni lo ninu awon arakunrin mi iwo ti se fun mi and then in acts of the apostles chapter 9 ninu si awon apostle ori kesan verse 5 ese ikanu e verse 4 and he fell to the earth and he had a voice saying so so why persecutest thou me ese ikerin o si subu lule o gbo ohun tin fo si pe solu solu ese ti won se ninu bi ni si mi and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. And so you see what Saul did to the believers. It was like he did it to the Lord. Be kind to the believers who are being kind to the Lord himself. Be hospitable to the believers who are being hospitable to the Lord. Show practical love to the believers so I shame practical law to the law. But now you see in Hebrews chapter 13. Immediately after teaching on practical love among the brethren, the apostle now begins to speak on marriage being honorable. And you can see the connection. Verses 1 to 3 talking about love among the brethren and then verse 4 telling us how to keep marriage, which is actually uh, something that the Lord had given in among him, among human beings, to show a kind of love. Keep that pure and keep that holy and keep it honorable. <laughs> In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. But all mongers and adulterers, God will judge. And you will see in this verse 4, a balance of the teaching of the word of God. You will see the positive side, you will see the negative side. Uh, let me give you this illustration, for example. If you see a man, and he has uh, hands that are too long, it's good to have a hand. If the hand is too long, it becomes an abnormal man. If you find a man that has a nose that is uh, so big, as big, as long as, uh, you know, from the tip of the fingers uh, to the elbow, you know, that is abnormal. When you take a doctrine of the Bible, and you elongate it, you prolong it, you exaggerate it, you make it very big, that it gets out of proportion, out of size, it becomes abnormal, it becomes false doctrine. 
to wa nfa agun to n fa gbo ro gbo titi ti obire koja ala ti olorun la sile iyan ti baluma that's why you find in this but boy is very balanced on the positive side marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled idi ni ti obire ni ese ikerin wi pe gbogbo egun rege ni ti igbeyawo ni ki igbeyawo ki o ni ola laarin gbogbo eniyan ki akete si ji ala ile and then the other side of the coin it tells us but all mongers and adulterers god will judge ni akeji o wa so fun agbangba pe nitori awon agbere ati awon pansaga ni olorun yo da lejo as we look at that verse we are going to divide the study into three bi a se nwo ese yi a o pe e kan na si e ka meta god's honor of marriage without immorality akoko ni ola ti olorun fun igbeyawo ti ko le ri number two god's great judgment against immorality ekeji idajo nla olorun lori iwa iri number three godliness and freedom from immorality eketa iwa bi olorun ati omi nira kuro ninu iwa iri let's look at number one god's eje, honor of e, marriage without immorality eje ke awo koko akoko ola ti olorun fi fun igbeyawo ti ko le ri it says in verse four marriage is honorable in all ni ese ikerin oni ki igbeyawo ko ni ola laarin gbogbo eni when you look at the word of god you need to interpret in a balanced measure igba to ba wo oro olorun o ye ko tumo re ni ona to gbo rege i want you to look at the word all mo fe ki owo gbogbo eni yan ye obviously it's talking about human society it's talking about people it's talking about people that have life and people who have been born who have a desire to give birth to others and they do that legitimately in marriage daju daju o so nipa o ma dari hunrun eniyan ti abi ninu obirin eni ti abi to si ni ilepa ati ati ife ninu okan re lati bi eniyan ninu aye yi o ni ki igbeyawo ko lola laarin gbogbo won now marriage is honorable in all ki igbeyawo ki o ni ola laarin gbogbo eniyan what does that mean all ki ni ele wa tun ma si pe gbogbo eniyan it cannot be all infants marriage is not honorable among infants o gbodo je laarin awon ogbo were igbeyawo lo la laarin awon arobo it cannot be among toddlers marriage is not honorable in toddlers o gbodo je laarin awon ikoko igbeyawo ko lo la laarin awon ikoko it cannot be among adolescent teenagers who do not know their left from their right who are just growing up in life it's not honorable among them ko lo la laarin awon odo were a igbeyawo laarin awon odo to sese ni dagba yi igbeyawo lo la laarin won marriage is honorable in all who are matured physically spiritually and they have something doing they can keep themselves and they can keep a man or keep a woman marriage is honorable in all igbeyawo o ni o la laarin eyin ti e ti dagba ti e toju bo eyin to je pe e dagba ni to to ki se pe e dagba ni kan e tun ri si ajese e tun ri nkan te fi le toju obirin iru re yin be igbeyawo lo la laarin yin we need to understand that god himself has placed honor upon marriage o ye koye wa gba gba pe olorun ti kara re ti fi ola gidigan sori igbeyawo it is a special honor on marriage because it was a false institution that god had after the creation of adam and eve olorun fi ola to lagbara gan sori igbeyawo tori pe o je idasile akoko ninu awon ti olorun dasile leyin isese da adam ati fa Genesis chapter two. No, no, Genesis already came. See the honor that God Himself put upon Mary. Oh, oh, oh! All that Allah of His story, be yahu. Genesis chapter two, verse eighteen. Genesis already came. Yes, I came. No, and the Lord God said, "It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him." Oh, Lord, Allah of His story, be yahu. God Almighty, O Lord, Almighty, O Lord, Almighty. Emi o se olura lo wo ti o dabi re fun In verse 22 and the reed with the Lord had taken the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man Oluwa Olorun si fi e gogun iha ti o mu ni iha okunrin na ma obirin o si mu to okunrin na wa And so you will find here think about the time of that marriage Iwo na wa ro nipa akoko ti a se gbe yawo yi It was before the fall Ele se le saju isugbe Which means then marriage was not because of the fall of man it is not because of the sin of man and before the fall when man was still holy in the purity that god had made him in god instituted marriage he honored marriage therefore o wa tu ma si wi pe igbeyawo ki si abajade si subu ti eniyan subu si waju isubu eniyan nigba ti eniyan si wa ni mima ati ninu pipe iwa re ni olorun se idasile igbeyawo yen ni pe olorun fi ola fun igbeyawo and look at the place where god himself honored that marriage in the garden of eden before the fall where all the beauty of the glory of creation was centered it was a very crown that showed how great how beautiful the things the lord had made the time and the place where god instituted that marriage showed very clearly that he honored marriage igbeyawo na ti sele o sele ninu ogba edeni 
iyan ni pe ni biti ewa ogo ati ola olorun tin joba eleni wi pe olorun fi ola ti o ga ti o si polopo lopo fun igbeyawo tori pe olorun se da sile re now we see that god the father or not married let's look at god the son himself Ari, jesus christ our lord and savior ari pe olorun baba o fi ola fun iya fun igbeyawo ni baye wa je ke awo olorun omo jesus christ bi o se fola fun igbeyawo john chapter 2 ninu johanu ori keji looking at verses 1 and 2 ese ikin ni ati keji and the third day There was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage Ni joketa asin se igbeyawo kan ni Cana ti Galilee iya Jesus sin be nibe asi pe Jesus ati awon ome yin re pelu si bi igbeyawo And in verse 11 this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him Ni ese ikokan la akose si ami yi ni Jesus si se ni Cana ti Galilee o si fi ogo re han awon ome yin re si gba gbo when you think about the many miracles that jesus performed so ba run ni po opolopo ese eya ni jesus oluwa you think of the reason why he performed those miracles so sin run ni di gan to bi se ese eya nu na there was so supernatural signs to prove that this is the messiah this is the anointed one this is christ the savior and the very first sign he will give to show the people that i am the expected one he gave that sign in the marriage in cana of galilee he honored marriage he said mi meri ri ti o han pe jesu ni messiah oni christi oni eni ti a o fi se bo fun ese araye an mi pe oni messiah ise yanu akoko yi lo se ni bi igbeyawo ti a se ni kana ti galilee in ephesians now chapter 5 ninu efesu bayi ori karun you know that all scripture is given by inspiration of god o ma pe gbogbo ewe mi ma ni adun ni pa emi si olorun you know that this came from the holy spirit himself o si ma pe leyi gan lati ode mi ma gan lo ti wa what did the holy spirit lead Paul the apostle to write concerning marriage. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25. Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for it. And then he tells us in verse 28 so men so ought men to love their wives as their bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself o to so fun ani ese ikeji din logbon pe be ni o to ki awon okunrin ki o ma feran awon aya won gege bi awon ara awon ti kara won eni ti o ba feran aya re o feran awon ti kara re in this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church ese ikeji le logbon asirin la ni eyi sugbon emi nso ni pa ti christi ati ti ijo here is the holy spirit telling us that the relationship between christ and his church is like into that of the husband and the wife making use of marriage as a pure symbol as a good symbol to show us the relationship eternal relationship between christ and his church ni ni apostle nso ni pa iba se po ijo ati christi ti o wa nfi igbeyawo se apere mimo eleti o si apere aye raye nipa igbe nipa igbeyawo tabi asepo tin be laarin christi ati ijo re how this shows us very clearly then as god the father honors marriage jesus the son of god honors marriage and the holy spirit the holy ghost also honors marriage eleyi lo wa fi wa lo fi han wa gba ngba gege bi olorun baba se fi ola fun igbeyawo olorun omo jesus christi o fi ola fun igbeyawo emi mi mo fun rara re o wa lowo si igbeyawo the point is this if the father the son the holy ghost the trinity if that god the godhead honors marriage then we the children of god we ought to honor marriage koko ti a wa fe fa yo nbe ni pe bi baba bi omo ati bi emi mi mo ati bi meta la meta lokan lapapo ti an ba fi ola nla fun igbeyawo awa ti aji omo olorun a gbodo fi ola to ga fun igbeyawo it means we should not do anything that will dishonor marriage iya ni pe a o gbodo se nkan kan ti o ko yan igbeyawo kere number 1 in doctrine we should never dishonor marriage akoko ninu eko ta fi nkan ni a o gbodo fi ogoyan o ya igbeyawo kere you in the church in general we should not dishonor we should not be little we should not relegate marriage to the background we should not be negative to marriage in the church ekeji ni pe ninu ijo lapapo a o gbodo foju tin bi ni oro igbeyawo a o gbodo tabuku igbeyawo a o gbodo so igbeyawo di o nye pere ninu ijo number 3 we should not dishonor 
We should not destroy the marriage of any individual. If we honor it, we're not going to destroy it. And God honors marriage in all. Therefore, as a member of the church, as a child of God, you will be very careful. You do not tamper with the family of anyone in the church or even in the society. So then it is very clear that if we love God, if we honor God, you will love what God loves, you will honor what God honors, you will hate only what God hates, then are you manifesting that you are children of God? We come back to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Let the church let the honor God has put on marriage, let it remain. And there is one way we're going to honor marriage. It says the bed must remain on the fire. Because all mongers and adulterers, God will judge. That leads us to point two in our study. God's great judgment against immorality. God's great judgment against immorality. He tells us, all mongers okay. and adulterers, God will judge. Very clearly then, anyone that dishonors marriage, through immorality, through fornication, through adultery, dishonors God. And then God says, he will judge him. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. 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 And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adult idol, adulterers. Here we can see the attitude of God. He will be swift, he will be quick in judging the sorcerers and the adulterers. He puts them in the same group, in the same team of the people that are going to receive the fairy judgment of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. Ephesians 5 5. For this ye know that no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And the apostle was telling the believers, he said, it's no secret. Everybody knows this. Everybody should know this. He was telling them that if you belong to the church at Ephesus, and you are living in adultery, and you are living in fornication, you do not have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ, neither do you have inheritance in the kingdom of God, you'll just be a nominal bench warmer in the Ephesians church, and you will not get to heaven. Then he said in verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, adultery, fornication, covetousness, and such like, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
nitori ni pase nkan won yi agbere pasaga oju koko ati ruba won ni ni ibinu olorun se nbo wa sori awon omo ala igboran in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 8 ninu corinthians kini ori kewa ese ikejo neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day 3 and 20000 be ni ki awa ki o ma se se agbere gege bi awon miran ninu won ti se ti egba mokan la le egba erun eniyan si subun ni ijo kan now you will see the attitude of god and if you're really on the side of the lord if you have the mind of christ if you have the spirit of god you will not take adultery fornication with a light hand you will not belittle it and you will not say what is it that uh, we have done that nobody else has done before it was so serious that in one single day 23000 died among the children of israel and went to hell because of immorality because of fornication and adultery so ba je pe ni toto ni o wa ni ira ti oluwa to ferun oluwa ti o si ni okan christi o ko ni ma foju kere oro pasaga tabi agbere tabi ko ma fo wo ye pere mo pe e kin la se telo mi o ti se ri tori pe ese agbere ati pasaga ti awon omo israeli se ni ojo kan egba mokan la le egbe rin eniyan subun ni ojo na and in first corinthians chapter 6 ninu corinthians kini ori kefa verses 9 and 10 ese ikesan ati no ye know that your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Tabi awon loju kokoro tabi awon omuti tabi awon elegan tabi awon aloni lowo gba ni yo jogo ijoba olorun now you see the greatest thing that can happen to you or happen to me is to enter the kingdom of god o je mo pe on to lo lato ga julo to le sele si o ati semina oni pe ka wo ijoba olorun that's greater than being a pastor of a church ele ma ga ju pe ke eyan oju oluso agbe ijoba greater than being a worker in the church iyan ga ju pe ke eyan oju oluso ni greater than being called a member of deep life o ga ju pe ke eyan kan ji omo ejo deep life the thing that can happen to you or happen to me is for god to open the door of the kingdom of god and say come in inherit the kingdom of god that's the greatest thing that can happen to all on to ga julo to lo la julo ti olorun le se fun ati femi na o ni pe ti a ba de itawura ni ki olorun ko si si leku fun e pe ma wo labor wo labor on to ga julo ni pe ki olorun ko gba wa sini ijoba re the greatest evil the greatest danger the greatest calamity that can happen to me or happen to you is for god to say you can be a pastor but i don't want you in my kingdom you can be a worker you can be a member of what they call deeper life you can remain there i allow you to remain there but i will never allow you to enter the kingdom of god that's the greatest calamity that can happen to you happen to me ajalu ati da mo ati ibaro je to ga lo la julo to le sele si mi ati eti o le sele si iwo na ni pe ki olorun fi aye gba ayan ninu ijo pe o le je olusa asan ninu ijo tabi ko ojo se ninu ijo tabi ko oji omo ijo ti an pe ni dipa sugbon pe wa wu orun yen mi o ni fa aye gbo lati wo be ajalu nla ni to ba sele si if you or i anyone if we commit fornication or adultery and no man knows about it and we keep our position as pastor as worker, as member in the church, and we think we're doing well. After all, I'm still the pastor. After all, I'm still the leader. And we do not get to heaven is the greatest eternal calamity that can happen to anyone. Oh. Be very careful. We must be free from adultery, free from fornication, if we're going to get to the kingdom of God. <laughs> kin ti wonu ese tabi ko ti wonu ese agbere tabi pansaga lo ka wa ma dibo ka ma pa ipo wa mo nitori pe ni pe ni o mo ni pa re ka si ma ro ko ngogo dara ko wa je pe ni pa se leyi eyan wa so aye raye orun re eyan wa so nu adanu nla ni when is it very serious to commit fornication or adultery ese to bi le to be lati desi agbere ati pansaga number 1 it makes some believers around us blaspheme the name of god akoko ni pe yo je ki awon ala igbagbo to wa layi ka wa ki won soro di soruko oluwa you say you are born again you say you are going to deeper you say you believe in holiness 
Look at this now. It will make those unbelievers to blaspheme the name of the Lord. When you do it, it's a serious matter. Number two, it will drag the reputation of Christ and the reputation of the church into the mud. Number three, it makes us to forfeit our relationship and fellowship with God. The assurance of salvation, you will lose it. And the joy of salvation, rejoicing that you belong to the Lord, you will lose it. Your name will no more be in the book of life. Therefore, it makes us to lose the power and the privilege of ministry. You see, brothers and sisters, the words you are hearing from me, the ordinary words, except they are impregnated by the Holy Ghost, energized by the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, except the Holy Ghost will make use of them like arrows coming into somebody's heart, it will not have any effect at all. Therefore, if a person like me, for example, just a preacher, if uh, he commits a- adultery or fornication, maybe the church doesn't know. He'll keep on preaching, he'll keep on speaking empty words, it will have no power. It will save no soul. It will not be effective on anybody. He might be there as a figurehead, but the power, the privilege of ministry has been taken away. That's why adultery, fornication is a serious matter. Five, the reason why God is very serious about it is because it hurts your loyal wife or your faithful husband, the one who has been keeping herself and saying, no, I will not allow that to happen to me because I, I want to be loyal to my husband. If the husband now, that the wife is trying to keep herself, becomes unfaithful, it hurts the wife to the death of her heart. That will be very difficult to comfort that woman. <laughs> Number six, it makes us to lose the respect and the honor and the trust of our own children. Number seven, we lose the credibility that we have with the leadership of the church, the church that has been respecting us before, uh, giving us assignment before. Oh, the church will now say, we don't know that's how sister so-and-so is. We don't know that's how brother so-and-so is. You lose credibility with the leadership of the church. Number eight, you bring shame on Christianity as a whole. Number nine, you hinder the repentance of sinners to be converted. They will say, why are we going to repent? The people that are preaching to us to repent, they themselves, we didn't know they were doing the things they are telling us to repent from. Why should I repent? You will hinder the repentance of sinners. And if they go to hell because of your sin, it were better you are not born. Number 10, it exposes you to the danger of contracting gonorrhea or AIDS or a deadly disease. Number 11, 
Number 11 it weakens other believers who are facing temptation. Those who have been saying, if God is helping brother so and so, he will help me, I will stand. If God is helping sister so and so, who the husband has run away and they're still expecting the husband and the husband is not there now and she is taking her stand. If God is helping her, God will help me. Then this person hears, the person that he thinks God is helping has fallen into sin. The sister that he thinks God is helping as falling into a multi, ah, he will say, if those people have done it, I cannot survive. Because Number 12 is very serious. It makes Satan to be happy and to laugh at God. And to laugh at Christ and say, Christ, come here, come here. You say you died on the cross. You say you saved those people. And you say that your blood has power to save. My own temptation is stronger than your blood. Do one, look at them. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. I made them to Paul. And all his demons will be laughing at Christ, saying, After all, Christ has no power. When you do something that makes Satan to laugh at God and laugh at Christ and laugh at the sacrifice on Christ of Calvary, you've done something so very bad. You see now why God is unhappy about it. Okay. I believe we will overcome. The blood of Jesus is strong, we will overcome. Because if Christ sent us into us, and we keep on reading the Bible, and we are praying, and we depend upon the Lord, He will keep us, He will keep us in Jesus' name. We look at point number three, godliness and freedom from immorality. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. You look at that part, and the bed undefiled. Forget the past, start from today. Whatever your backslide in the past, forget, and start from today. And come to make a new resolution, a new kind of covenant with the Lord Almighty. That the bed will be undefiled. You will not sleep anywhere that you will do something that the public cannot hear about. House, in another person's house, in an hotel, when you travel out of town, wherever you may find yourself, you make up your mind that the bed will be undefiled. Why are you doing that? Because you have something to guard, you have something to keep. What are you keeping? What are you guarding? Number one, you have your soul to guard and to keep. It never dies so. If you have been redeemed by the Lord, if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and if there is a place you know is prepared for you in heaven, you want to preserve, you want to guard this soul that has been saved, it will not be polluted again by the sin of fornication or adultery. Number two, your salvation. That the salvation you have got nothing will take it away from you. Salvation is greater than money. It's greater than property. It's greater than anything you can have in the world. And this greatest of gifts coming from Christ through Calvary that the Lord has given to you. You want to keep and guard it so that nothing will take it away from you. 
Number three, our relationship with God. Adam and Eve lost that in the Garden of Eden. Adam Think about such a relationship that we should be called the children of God. That we should be called the sons and the daughters of the King of Kings. That we should have the privilege and say, Our Father, which art in heaven. That we will live within us and will walk in His way. At any time we have any need, we can go to the throne of grace and we can ask Him for anything that we need. Such a relationship you need to guard, you need to keep, and if you are going to guard it, there will be no fornication, there will be no adultery, there will be no immorality. Number four is our rewards in glory. We've been singing about heaven. We've been talking about heaven. Some of us have had dreams on the rapture. And some of us will, we, we remember heaven every time, and we know that that day will come when he will reward us in glory. For all that reward in glory, you will lose in a moment of time because of the pleasure of sin. Number five, what we have to get, the deposit of the spirit and the power of God in us. Look at the Holy Spirit that is giving to us, the abiding comforter. The power of the Holy Ghost. That same power that manifested itself in the life of Jesus Christ and he said, the works I do, ye shall do also. We need to get that one by keeping ourselves away from adultery, away from fornication. Number six, our privilege in ministry. Have you ever thought about it? Even for you to stand on this pulpit like this, before thousands of people, even if it is to only make announcements, even if it is to come here and sing a solo, if it is to come here before thousands of people and lead such the scripture, a great privilege indeed. And uh, this is a privilege that many, many other people are looking forward to. There sometimes uh, some people they meet me. They are outside a deeper life Bible church. And then they will say, one of them told me he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw me. And then he was standing by my side. And he was so very happy. And then he said, I took a big Bible in hand. And he wanted to just help me carry the Bible. And then come to a large congregation. Then he woke up. Then he will tell me he became sorrowful. Then he will tell me, Pastor, please give me the interpretation of that dream. Since I am not in your church, should I come to your church and say, well, if you come, you are coming and say, member. He said, what? But I had a dream. They look at it as a great privilege. And for those of us who are here, and the privilege already is in our hand, ah, I pray that this privilege, nothing will take it away from your hand in Jesus' name. I want me not to you so I go to you. can you know what to let you want your cut off we pay. Mama la la ni ni nwa la mi mo wa ri pe e duro bayi emi na wa do legbe yin o wa da je pe mo ran yin lowo lati ba yin gbe bibeli nla kan bi mo le ti ri pe agbe bi mo gbe bibeli nla na a wa ni waju opolopo eniyan lojiji mo kan taji ni bi mo le se taji bayi banu je wa wa nu okan mi e je fun mi ni tun ma laye ma de o lusa ta so fun pe to ba wa si jo ti wa 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 si be gege bi omo ijo ni o nti a wa ni gege bi anfani lati ma be gbe gbe run awon eniyan soro awon eniyan yin wo ni ta bi ola nla awata ni adura Number seven, our testimony, you need to keep it or you need to guard it. Number eight is our family. You know, if you get into this something like this, you can scatter your family, scatter your children, lose the respect of your family. That precious family the Lord has given you, where you are rejoicing, there is love in your family. Keep that family, get that family, run away from this other thing because it will make you lose your family. Number eight, 
nitori pe to ba lo lowo si awon nkan won yi yo da gbogbo ebi re ru nitori eleyi lo fi lati su ara re ku ninu awon nkan won yi ki ife ko le ma tesi wa jinu ebi re number 9 our health e ke san ni ile ra wa because uh, diseases dangerous deadly diseases are now being transmitted by fornication and adultery if you want to keep your health you must run away from adultery and fornication nitori pe laye odi oni iku ti di meji e pin ni aisan ko gbogbo tin kiri gbogbo aye nitori ase agbere ati pansaga yi to ba be pa ile ra re mo o lati sa fun ese pansaga ati agbere we keep our wealth and resources a pa oro ati isura wa mo our reputation a pa la wa mo and 12 our future our destiny in eternity e keji la ni pe ojo iwaju wa aye raye wa ni bi orun wa ta lo how are we going to be able to keep ourselves from this immorality and from fornication and adultery ba o la se wa le gbara wa lowo ese agbere ati pansaga yi in matthew chapter 5 ninu matthew ori karun reading from the Verse 27. Let us say, "Get a new that it was said of them by them of old, 'Thou shalt not commit adultery.'" Eyin ti gbo bi ati wi fun awon ara igba ni pe iwo ko gbodo se pansaga o da se unto you that whoever looks on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart gbo emi wi fun yin bi eneke ni ti o ba wo obirin kan lati se ifeku fe si o ti ba se pansaga tan di okan re and if the right hand offend thee the right hand offend thee pluck it out and cast it from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish and not that thy whole body shall be cast into hell bi oju otun re ba mu oko se yo jade ki o si sonu o sa le re fun o ki e ya ara re kan ki o se gbeju pe a gbe gbogbo ara re ju si na ora ba is as useful to you as your eye profitable to you as your eye dear to you as your eye precious to you as your eye if it is leading you to commit immorality leading you to have lust leading you to have thoughts that will make you go into sin cut off from him cut off from her it is profitable for you to cut her off and enter into life without the advantage of joining together with her or with him rather than you have him you have her and you have all the things you are doing together then you go to hell bi enike ni ba so won fun e tabi to seye bi lo fun e gege bi oju otun re ti eni na wulo lopo lopo gege bi oju otun re se wulo fun to je pe ninu gbogbo asepo yin a ma mu okan re fa si fe ku fi ati se ku se o san ko ta iru eni be nu ko iyago fun iru eni be o san fun e lati lo si orun lai ni gbogbo awon anfani ti wa ti ti o tin ni ba se po yin jade ju pe ko wa ni gbogbo awon anfani ti e jo rin ninu ese ko wa lo sorun apadi in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 Thessalonica ke ni ori karun ese ikeji le logo stain from all appearance of evil e ma atakete si on gbogbo ti o ti ojo ibi any picture that will bring immorality into your heart abstain aworan ka woran to ma mu ewa iri wa sinu okan re yago fun any intimacy between you a man and a woman in the office or in your house or in the church any intimacy that will bring suggestions that are evil in your heart in your heart that you will not be able to control cut off that intimacy asepo wole wode to le wa ye laarin wo ati obirin kan ni bi ise re abi ninu le re tabi ninu ijo ele to je pe ti asepo ye ba tin tese waju yo mu e ko male sakoso aye re ti wa fi wonu iwa iri lo yago fun ire ni abe any film show any video because there are some people they say i don't believe what the church is saying don't watch this don't watch this i am a matured person all right any video any film that will bring suggestions of evil into your heart cut it all i wanna cinema to be video kan ele to je wi pe awon kan ma so eh nti church nso emi o gba gbo emi o gba ti won gbo ni pa pe ka ma wo ti bi ka ma wo to su gba a e wa wo ran cinema tabi video kan to ba ma mu ete tabi ile pa lati se ife ku fe wa sinu okan re yago fun i believe we can live a victorious life mo gbagbo pe ale gbeje aye asegun we can enjoy complete freedom from sin ale ni afani lati di omira patapata ko lowo ese copy am i to have a good daily quiet time and prayer before the lord it will strengthen your fellowship with god ti o ba le se pe ninu okan re lati ni akoko idakeje lojo ojuma ti o lo dede ati akoko adura pelu oluwa yo mu ki igbagbo re lagbara you keep your heart you keep your mind you keep your eyes away from any magazine away from any place any people that will bring temptation to lost in your life keep yourself away from them mama pa okan re aya re 
Oju re mo kuro ninu awon iwe ati gbade gbabi magazine ati awon aworan tabi awon nkan to wa layi ka wa to le mu wa lo sini idewo from the beginning of a little thought that's the time to deal with that problem nigba ti eroyen ba ko so kule ninu okan re doju kan ero na because thoughts will produce action nitori pe ero yo mu wa lo sinu ise actions will lead to habit ise yo si mu ki o di wa wa habit when it becomes regular will form your character iwa yen ta ba nse lera lera a wa di baraku fun wa your character will determine your destiny ba didi baraku to di baraku yen ni o pe nu bi to ti lo aye raye re may god make us free and keep us free in jesus name adura wa ni pe ki oluwa so wa de mira ko si pa wa mo ninu omi nira na ni oruko jesus job chapter 31 verse 1 job ori kokan le logbe ese ikini i made a covenant with my eyes why then shall i think upon ime emi ti ba oju mi da ma je mu nje emi o wa se tejuma mundia but my brothers and sisters you need to take some decisions and those decisions will make you to actually cut off quite a lot of things ara korin ati ara berin emi o lati yan ipinu kan awon ipinu to ba yan yan oni o je mu gbogbo awon nkan kan ku oni ninu aye re sometimes you'll find uh, somebody will say i am a deeper life uh, brother and will say what work are you doing and he will say well i ride okada and uh, i take all those people will say uh, you are a member of this church you say yes i ride okada and you take all those women at your back pressing their chest on you when you break and you are still a christian well i'm trying to be a christian when the trumpet sounds we may not find you among us up there igba miran a ma se alagba pade awon kan ani christian lo ta ba ni bo le ti je christian ti ani jo deeper se ni to to ni o ise ki le wa nse wa ni a awon to ma ngwa lukuku okada ise yen ni mo nse je o awon ti a de wa so pe se lo to ni ise christian ni oni be ni te ba de ngwa okada yin awon obirin a de joko leyin yin igba ti ba joko leyin yin te ba te break e fara gbura e de ni christian ni ani a mo ngbi yan ju lati je christian ni a ti pe ba dun boya la ri ru awon eyan be you find the lady sisters they say they are deeper life they will sit at the back of that okada and they will hold the man like this with their breast and chest behind the man they are still deeper life sisters if the trumpet sounds we may not find you among us over there igba mi re we awon mi dan ti an lawon ji omo deeper life awon sisi le ri ti won o joko leyin oga leyin okada wa tu wa di mo okunrin olokada yen wa ti nu awon ato yen wa ti ma leyin wa ta ba si ni se mo deeper ni wa lo mo deeper na ni e ba ba o ri ta to ti pe ba dun boya la ri o nbe You need a covenant to make heaven. Oni lo lati se kunu lati do. I'm talking about a serious matter. Oro to si le la nso ni pare. It was a matter that made Joseph when that woman wanted to commit sin with him, he left his clothes and ran away. He didn't stay there and said I'm still a believer. I will manage. If you are managing like that, the trumpet may sound, we may not find you up there. Ani an so ni pa nkan to je pe ni gba to wa sodo Joseph o ma nto se agbada re o sonu ni o sa sa la fe mi re. ki se boka joko nbe ko wa mo gbadura pe mo ndogbon ogbon wo lo nda o le dogbon yen ki pe oduwa o de ni ri o nbe if you are a man you make a covenant with your eyes so ba joko rin da ma je mu pelu o covenant with your body e ma je mu pelu awon re covenant with your hand ma je mu pelu owo re covenant with everything you have ma je mu pelu gbogbo to ba ni will not meditate in an evil way with lust upon a maid pe o ni ma sasaro pelu ero idi ba je ninu okan re si odo mo berin if i lady the same thing go ba jo mo berin kan ta na ni you will make a covenant with your eyes wa ba oju re da ma je covenant with the members of your body ma je mu pelu eya ara re that you will not be so familiar with a man it will be bringing evil suggestions to you and then you already be practicing evil and when you see the man you are so helpless you cannot resist evil you will make a covenant tonight you are going to be holy in the name of jesus ani wo gaga bi omo berin wa da ma je mu na wi pe iwo lewo de kankan oni sele laarin iwo ati ati okunrin kankan lele to je pe to ba tin runu ni pa re wa ma re ro ife ku fe ninu okan re pe to ba de ti ri okunrin na o ti di dakuda o ni le sakosu ara re mo la lei o ri ofi olorun yo re lowo lati le bori ni oruko jesus is the trumpet your son now are you ready for the lord ti pe ba do ba e so mo ra ta foluwa do you think that just because we come to bible study we are all here we are preaching we are hearing we are walking we are serving we are leading do you think that's enough to get to heaven abi ero ti e tele ni pe ka san sa wa si bi bayi ka wa su ko ma gbo ka jo ma gbo ni dapo pe pa ba yen wa wa dorun ni pa be my own desire is that i will not just preach in vain i don't just want to be a preacher i want to live a life privately and publicly that when the trumpet sounds by the grace of god i still want to make it on that final 
And if you have already fallen into sin, instead of managing and just saying, I'm a worker, I'm a leader, why don't you leave all those things aside and go to the very presence of God and dig deep and pray until the blood of Jesus will cleanse you once again. You'll never remain, again, remain the same again. And then the power of God will come afresh. The purity of the Lord will come afresh. You will know you are a real child of God. After that, if there is work to do, fine. If there is no work to do, you'll be waiting until we go to heaven. So bad Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We are not looking for work, we are looking for how to get to heaven. We are not looking for position here, we are looking for how to get to heaven. And we are not running away from discipline here. I don't want them to hear, I don't want them to discipline me. I want to keep my work, I want to be serving. We are not looking for that here, we came here because this is the gateway to heaven. Look at your life. Open it before the Lord. Be transparent before the Lord. Activity will not take you to heaven. Being a pastor will not take me to heaven. And being a leader will not take me to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You may run to another church and they make you a preacher, they make you a pastor. That doesn't take anybody to heaven. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. But there is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. He can cleanse you, he can cleanse me. He can purify you, he can purify me. He can make you holy, he can make me holy. He can change your life, he can change my life. He can put our feet on the way that goes to heaven. And make us faithful. And make us pure. And make us holy. Whether our wives are there or not there. Whether our husbands are there or not there. He can put that thing that hates sin in our hearts. That sister, you will not allow your manager, your boss to be fumbling with your body. You will know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And brother, you will not allow the devil to be making fun of you and ridicule you and even laughing at Christ because of your action, you will live a righteous life, you will live a holy life that heaven will be happy about you. We can be holy. We can be righteous. But not all things are possible. And if you believe tonight, He will cleanse you. He will forgive you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. You go out of this place in victory. And you will be triumphant in Christ.